Hey, hey, Vanessa, you know, stop pointing at stuff. This isn't TikTok. This is YouTube, where we actually deliver solid information. Yeah, no, this isn't that. Thank you. This isn't TikTok. All right, we've got a lot to talk about, so let me get you to speed as we sit on my couch, my pretty pink couch. Ooh. There it is. So Canon in Canon fashion made a huge announcement in the middle of the night while you were sleeping. I'm not sleeping, actually I am sleeping, I scheduled this, but we have a lot coming. Canon has announced this morning that they are releasing a development announcement. We don't know when they're releasing it. There's an announcement. They are developing three new mirrorless lenses, RF line lenses, one of which I am super excited about the other two not really my wheelhouse, but we'll talk about them anyway. And the biggest announcement, the camera, all right? Yes, the camera. Is it the camera we've all been waiting for? Is it the final end of the pro line, the highest, the echelon of the full frame mirrorless system for Canon? We will get into that. First, let's talk about the two things that I just wanna get off the list because honestly, I'm not gonna use them, but a lot of you will. Canon has announced they are developing a 400 2.8 RF lens as well as an RF version of the 600 f4 now what's the difference between the ef version and the rf version nothing at all except the rf mount it's basically taking the adapter and putting it right onto the ef lens and just making it for the mirrorless line making it possible to use it without using an adapter and have an RF version of the lens. Sometimes there's just nothing that you're going to really improve when you are transitioning from DSLR lenses to mirrorless lenses. Of course, Canon has done an amazing job at improving and inventing new lenses for the RF line, like the RF 20-70 to F2 lens that I'm using right now. That baby's a beast. You can check out another video for that. I promise I'm talking about that R3 and the other new lens next, but in the meantime, if you wanna grab some posing inspiration, head to bit.ly forward slash pose joy or the link below. But the lens I am super excited about and the one that I definitely will pick up is this new RF 100 macro lens. It's a 2.8 lens and you would think in your head, okay, well, they have the EF version. I own that one. This is not a circumstance though where they just took like the 400 and the 600 lens and adapted it and made it a native RF mirrorless line lens. They added something groundbreaking to this macro lens. It's called S. A control or spherical aberration control. There's no real way to explain what this is. So I'm gonna let you take a look at these photos that are coming from Canon that really demonstrate what this lens can do. I absolutely cannot wait to get this thing on my ring shots. It's giving you control of how the bokeh or bouquet, I really don't care, how it comes out. As you move that SA control, it changes the way that it looks in a way that we've never been able to before, at least that I haven't seen. You're all correct me in the comments if it's been around somewhere else, but I certainly have not seen it around in a lens like this. The other remarkable thing about this lens, yes, it is a 2.8 lens, which is great, even though I don't really shoot macros at 2.8, it also has image stabilization, which I definitely find useful, especially when I'm shooting natural light macro shots, because I don't shoot at 2.8, I'm usually somewhere around 7.1, 5.6, usually not even as low as 5.6, so I don't want to bump my ISO. So I can lower my shutter speed using that image stabilization. That's there in the EF lens. The remarkable thing about this lens that is definitely a bump up from the EF version is it has a 1.4 times macro. So you can go closer and create an image that that is larger than life size. That is insane. You're going to get such crazy detail out of this lens in addition to being able to do something super creative with that SA control. There will be a video when I get my hands on this lens. It is like already filled out on an order form. I cannot wait to get this thing in my hands. 
Now for what most of you are definitely interested about, we have the announcement of the EOS R3. What is this camera? Well, it's a hybrid really between the R5 and the 1DX3 line. Honestly, it's got a camera made for me since I have been shooting with the 1DX line since the 1DX. I've owned the 1DX, 1DX2, and I own currently the 1DX3, but I've moved to mirrorless for a lot of the different advantages and definitely for the glass because there's been such improvement there. And I'm not going to tell you I know the roadmap. I don't know the roadmap of Canon, but you can clearly see a line being drawn towards the RF line. So I want to go where the technology is headed. But the R3 is a combination of the two of them. In reality, if I were to sum up the R3, it is the mirrorless pro photographer sports camera. It's a completely new class of camera that's marrying a lot of the sports functionality of the 1DX3 and why a lot of sports photographers love that camera with the new technology of the R5. Canon didn't give us a whole lot of information, not even to us EOLs. I don't know how many megapixels. I don't know how fat, no, I do know how fast it's going. That's on my other information sheet. Here's what we do know about this new camera. Well, we've got this pretty new picture that you can look at and it does look like a form factor. I know I'm going to be happy with. I love having that kind of beefy body, meaty body in my hands. Enjoy that. This camera, like I mentioned, is a high performance camera. It's meant for professional users who demand reliability and durability from their gear. It has superior results for high performance photography, which is why I think it's really the sports photography camera answer to the mirrorless line. Very interesting about the sensor, this is the first full frame Canon produced back illuminated stacked CMOS sensor. It is designed for high speed readout, which makes sense because Canon is telling us that the electronic shutter will shoot up to 30 frames per second. That is wicked fast. And it can shoot that fast while on autofocus tracking and continuous auto exposure. Even when using that electronic shutter, Canon is claiming that you are going to have very low image distortion, especially when compared to previous Canon electronic shutters. Next up, the focusing system. And this is what's going to blow your mind or make you remember an older camera if you know what I'm talking about. First of all, you've got Canon, they are improving the autofocus with the head, body, eye, face detection, like they're always improving. It's gorgeous in this R5. I'm obsessed with it. Thank God it works because I'm filming all by myself here today. But this new camera, the R3, is going to take that even further with deep learning technology, making advancements in the autofocus tech that's gonna come in this camera. They are adding new recognizable subjects to autofocus tracking. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but oh my goodness, if it can just recognize a bride and groom and know that I always want the bride and groom in focus, that's just, holy crap. That camera can almost think for me. And this part, this part, the next thing, it practically is thinking alongside with me. It's almost implanting that Elon Musk chip into the back of my head. This camera has eye input focus technology. Now, if you remember one of the older cameras, to be honest, I don't remember what the name was, but Canon had this tech a little while ago, but didn't really pursue it. And I imagine it's going to be much enhanced in this camera. It will be able to detect where your eyeball is looking in the frame and see where you're looking and put the focus there. Oh my word. You mean I don't even have to use my fingers to tell the camera what to focus on? That is insane. That is crazy, crazy talk. I have to try this out. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, will this work if I'm wearing sunglasses or contacts or glasses? We will just have to wait and see, get our hands on this and play and Lord knows enough of us YouTubers will put it through the tests as it comes out. I mean, this thing just looks rugged. It is sexy and rugged. Look at that texture. This is a distinct camera. That's a really cool texture. That's just going to look badass in my hands. 
It's taking that 1DX line and having an equivalent type of drip moisture resistance and durability, which I know is something that a lot of mirrorless users were looking forward to having. For me, being a former current 1DX3 user, I'm really loving that integrated vertical grip. Even though, to be honest, a lot of you have commented, I don't really use the vertical grip as much when I turn vertical because my camera strap and the tripod mount, but it just holds better. It balances, you know, the lenses out better when I'm using bigger or longer lenses and it just feels meatier. There's something about it. I don't know if it's because I'm a DSLR user, but I, I feel like it's just more professional and it looks better. And that probably tells me it's going to have a pretty cool battery in it and it's going to be something that lasts a little bit longer maybe than what the R5 is. Don't quote me on it. Just doing some thinking outside of the box. Canon has also announced along with this and probably the least thing that anyone's even looked at is this mobile file transmitter. It's going to make it even easier to take images from camera to computer or to server. Well, if you're a photojournalist and you're taking shots and they're being uploaded straight to a server faster to the editor, newspaper, wherever, huge. And even for me as a wedding photographer, if I can shoot throughout the wedding day, have this mobile files to my editors faster so that when I get home, I don't have to sit there in front of my computer for an hour and dump cards. I like that. Anything that's going to make me have a little bit more convenience in my life, my images have more accessibility, all of it's just a plus. So that's what we've got. That's the information I have for you. And hopefully I've given you some kind of excitement beyond the TikTok dancing that you have a lot to look forward to here in 2021 or 2022. They have not told us the release date yet along of course with like how many megapixels this camera has, you know, the video capabilities in there. Haven't told us any of that yet, but as soon as I know, you will know that's a lie because you know, embargo and I can only talk when I'm allowed to talk, just like everybody else. Make sure you hit subscribe, ring the bell so you're notified of all these new things. And of course, follow me on TikTok.